Hello everyone, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome back to yet another God of War video. And of course, happy 2023. Now, in today's topic and discussion video, I wanted to touch on something that I've purposely left for quite a while, so people can get through their Ragnarok playthrough. But now, seeing as we are in the new year, I did want to touch on a number of different questions that arose from Ragnarok's narrative. Such as, what is the green mask with the ancient engravings on it? What is beyond the emerald tear? And finally, what lies beyond it? Because this was a rift that not even the Grand or Father knew. A being of divine knowledge that devoted his entire life to figuring out what such power could be. So, in today's video, we will be talking about the rift, everything associated with it, and touching on how it is connected to the greater plane. But before we do begin, as always everyone, I would of course super appreciate it if we could first get this video to about 1000 likes. It's a small thing mind you, but it really, really does go a long way. Plus again, YouTube has been pretty brutal with coming down and age restricting God of War content. So any support shown here here really goes a long way, no matter what that might be. But without any further ado, let's get on with today's video. Now let's get right to the meat and potatoes of this video, first touching on what the rift actually is, and what do we currently know of it. Now as of right now, the rift is an unknown tear in reality, one that seems to be a gateway to something much, much older than what has previously been established in the God of War mythos supposedly tying to what is known as the Higher Plane. Now, for those unfamiliar with that terminology, the Higher Plane is said to be a reality that exists even above the gods. Whilst not much has been explained or even explored in that manner, we do know that something does exist behind this rift. As Odin described his first contact with it as vicious, as not long after Ymir's demise, he heard a voice from the great beyond. Something was whispering on the other side of it. Now, what is said next is what I would brand as a lie, as Odin did say he lost an eye from coming into contact with the Rift, but we also do know that he tore out one of his eyes in exchange for greater knowledge when he was drugged by Mimir. But one thing should always be stated when it comes to greater knowledge, it comes at a cost. So it wouldn't surprise me if something on the other side didn't want Odin to enter its domain. And this is where the mask comes into play. Now the mask itself is just as unknown as the rift, being a relic from a world beyond their own. But it's important to focus in on the inscriptions on the mask itself as it's engraved with a number of different languages that haven't even really been explored in the God of War universe properly. We see a bit of Greek in it, a bit of Japanese, some Egyptian hieroglyphics, and other languages that are still yet to decipher. So this mask doesn't originate from Norse mythology, but in fact could be a codex and key to a number of different worlds. Now understandably, such an item like this raises many questions, such as where does it come from? Where have these inscriptions been made? And most importantly, why exactly was this mask broken into three pieces? Because such a powerful item like this must have been separated for a reason. Maybe there was someone on the other side that did not deem Odin worthy of their knowledge and power. And maybe another reason why was that they always intended for someone like Atreus to fix it. Again, that is a theory at best on my end. But with how the pieces do fit together, it does look like something might be destined for the Jotnar. And with us of course being well aware that we are at the end of the Norse series of games, What's to say that this is the only mask? What if there are multiple scattered throughout different mythologies, with each of them functioning as a key of sorts to this divine heaven? With that said, let's touch a little bit more on the higher plane 
and what we have seen of it, so we can tie these ideas into each other. Now, throughout the God of War series, we have only been briefly exposed to this higher plane. Having realised that such a thing existed with the somewhat resurrection of Athena in God of War 3, now having an astral form and serving what seems to be a higher power. So this idea has existed for quite a while, and since then, we have been exposed to it in a few interesting ways. As Zeus takes on a similar form in your climactic battle against the god, which if similar to Athena's in any way, could indicate that such deities like this are still susceptible to death. But more recent exposure to this was during a God of War tie-in series, that being God of War Fallen God. After the Spartan is knocked unconscious, seemingly on the brink of death, he very briefly enters what is known as the Higher Plane, at least for a split second, as he is reunited with Athena, now in a living, breathing form, opposed to her astral projection, and Thoth, an Egyptian god. Now the interaction here is very quick and very brief, but does clearly show that there is something greater than what we have seen. One where gods of different pantheons are directly linked to each other. But it is worth mentioning that Fallen Gods is kinda pseudo-canon, as it's never really touched upon in the game. Now our next question here is what other ways can we enter the higher plane? We've already established that the tear is a gate and the mask is a key, but is there another option? Well, if I am to make a theory, I believe that Garm slash Fenrir may actually be the key to opening up the higher realm, as the tears in reality the wolf can create are eerily similar to the one we saw in Asgard. Now at best, this is of course a theory, but there is no denying that there is most certainly some similarities between the two, especially when Atreus went to hunt down the mask and it mysteriously stopped tracking the other fragment once Garm was freed. So it is indeed possible that Fenrir may be more important in the grand story than simply a wolf that Angraboda rode into battle. Plus, Skull and Harty do exist in the present and is the spawn of Fenrir, but Fenrir isn't around during the events of Ragnarok. Garm is. So, depending on what goes on with time travel, if they ever decide to look into it, we could learn of how this loop kind of cycles in and out of the higher plane and how it works with time, because we know that each of the realms function in their own time. None of them are exactly the same. With that also said, what mythology could this rift actually be connected to? Well, if I'm being entirely honest here, you see, it's nigh impossible to kind of pin this down because each pantheon has its own heaven. There is no definitive overarching afterlife that kind of branches every mythology together, as they all do strictly live and exist in their own separate worlds. Thus, the greater plane we have heard so much of could actually be its very own thing, not strictly tied to that of any mythology, but something made exclusively for the God of War universe. And with that in mind, the next question here is, is there a greater evil beyond it? Because from our brief experience with the greater plane, it looks like it's very well possible to be composed of fallen gods. Maybe ones that sacrificed themselves for the greater good. It is worth noting that the idea of God of War kind of having this mishmash of pantheons was actually a concept and idea for God of War 3, which was entirely different from the game that we did get, where the Olympian pantheon would dissolve and all other gods would be sucked into the world of Greece, where this war amongst gods would explode across Olympus. But nonetheless, it goes to show that ideas like this have been running genetically in the God of War universe for a long while. So, with this all said and covered, 
Where are we in this overarching narrative? Well, again, if we're looking at this as an overarching story, I have to be kind of completely honest. This seems like an overarching story that, at best, is being sprinkled in for a larger climactic end. So as of right now, it would not at all surprise me if many of the ideas that are being made or that have previously been established are completely changed in order to fit and make this story work. It's all subject to change, as we have seen with Ragnarok. Ideas are constantly in flux, so the current setup that they have for the higher plane could very well be extremely different to what we have now. So please do keep that in mind. With that said, everyone, what did you think of the Rift and the Mask? Do you think this all leads to a higher plane? And if so, what do you think we can expect from it? As Ragnarok left more questions than answers. But for now, everyone, that has been it for me. So as always, everyone, stay strong, stay well, and keep on fighting as Ragnarok is finally over. Take care, everyone. I'll see you soon.